I mean, the nation state altogether is a pretty artificial construct. I mean, nation states were established almost entirely by violence. Uh, and they bring together uh, and f they force into a single mold the people who often have little to do with one another. They speak different languages, they have different cultures, they have different traditions, uh, uh, different religions, you know, the, and the effort to mold them into a single entity uh, where they're all uh, subjected to the same fixed uh, national culture and uh, uh, the social commitments, uh, service to state power and so on, that's been pretty hard. Even the effort to establish borders has been a very, very violent process. Uh, Europe was the most savage place in the world for centuries while the nation state system was being imposed. Uh, finally, uh, Europe is no free from internal wars. Uh, there's a lot of uh, debate about the reason in the, in the political science literature, you know, I've talked about the democratic peace and so on. My feeling is the reason is, the basic reason is quite different. The Europeans did recognize, had to recognize in 1945 that if they ever try to fight another war, they'll just wipe out everything. You can't fight wars with that degree of destructive power in your hands. So therefore, it moves to a period of uh, more or less peaceful integration. But if you look around the world, where there are conflicts raging all over the place, virtually all of them have to do with nation state systems and boundaries that were imposed by the imperial powers, almost everywhere. Uh, so take Iraq. Uh, the British carved out Iraq in their own interests not in the interests of the people of the region. And uh, there are sharp differences among them, the Kurds and the Shiites and Sunni and so on. Furthermore, uh, Britain drew the boundaries of Iraq for, for their own interests. Again, they, want, they drew the northern boundaries so that Britain, not Turkey, would be able to exploit the oil resources. Uh, they drew the southern boundaries so that Iraq would be almost landlocked. Uh, that's why the Principality of Kuwait was separated out. Uh, and if you look around, uh, Africa is the same thing, uh, Asia, you know, let's say take Pakistan. Uh, the British drew a line called the Durand Line, uh, separating what was India from Afghanistan. Now it separates Pakistan from Afghanistan. The line cuts right through the Pashtun area and with kind of Pashtunistan. The Pashtun never accepted it. The Afghans never accepted it. And now if people uh, cross that border, we call them terrorists, they may be going home, you know. And the same is true of just about every, now take say the US-Mexico border. Now, that was established by a war of aggression uh, in which the US conquered half of Mexico. Uh, you take a look at the names of the cities and the southwest and western United States, uh, San Francisco, San Diego, Santa Cruz, I mean, Spanish names. Uh, people went, it was a pretty open border for a long time. Uh, people went up and back for you know, work, for um, visiting relatives, uh, cultural reasons, commercial, whatever. Uh, the, the border's been slowly militarized. The sharp increase in militarization was actually in 1994, and that was connected with NAFTA, the so-called Free Trade Agreement. Uh, U.S. officials understood perfectly well, and in fact said that uh, the effect of NAFTA will likely be to drive impoverished Mexicans across the border. Uh, NAFTA is going to essentially wipe out Mexican agriculture. Uh, Mexican campesinos can be perfectly efficient, but they cannot compete with uh, highly subsidized the U.S. agribusiness. So they'll be driven off the land. That's still happening. Right now, people are, campesinos are being driven off the land. Well, what do they do? A lot of them come north. So you get an illegal immigration problem. You have to militarize the border. The things like that are going on all over the world. I mean, I remember it struck me very, not that I didn't know it, but it struck me very dramatically uh, 60 years ago 
Uh, my wife and I were students. We were living in Israel, and we were kind of hitchhiking, you know, students' backpacks. And we were hitchhiking up in northern Israel, and we were just walking one evening, and uh, a car, a jeep came along on a road behind us, and the guy got out of the jeep and started yelling at us. And in Hebrew and told us, uh, you got to come back. Uh, what had happened is we'd walked into Lebanon. At, at that point, the border was unmarked. Now I suppose it's bristling with uh, you know, tanks and so on. But uh, and the, the border was just artificially drawn right through the Galilee uh, by the British and the French for their own purposes. It had nothing to do with the people there. And uh, all of the, uh, the same is true almost everywhere. And one of the reactions to all of this is uh, the kind of coalescence of uh, more or less coherent groups, you know, they're never totally so, uh, into uh, regions that they, where they feel more comfortable in running their own affairs.